Yeah, so I'm going to talk about Hamilton. Uh, it's uh, so what I'm going to uh, talk about uh, specifically, I guess, is I guess in the next 15 minutes, roughly, is the following: that hopefully I'm going to uh, convince you, or at least uh, attempt to convince you, that Hamilton is a new paradigm for creating data frames, um, and that uh, what we do at Stitchfix. So Stitchfix, we actually have 130 plus data scientists. Um, what Hamilton enables them to do is to focus on the functions or the feature vectors or the inputs to their models, rather than the glue code of like uh, getting things together. So um, uh, in Tyler's talk, he was talking about pipelines, getting things to models. This is kind of what Hamilton is trying to help um, uh, fix, or at least uh, uh, get uh, a handle on. And then the third is, uh, if you want to look at the codes, so everything I'm, I'm going to talk about is, is, is open source. That's the, the GitHub repo. So hopefully, uh, so three things in the next 15 minutes is uh, uh, I'm going to commit to you off. So uh, first is the backstory. Um, so at Stitchfix, uh, you know, we have 130 plus data scientists. We have people who whose job is to help people in different parts of the business make better decisions. One of them is this team called the Forecasting Estimation and Demand Team, or FED for short. Um, and they're responsible for making forecasts that help make the business make operational decisions. So for instance, we have our, our warehouse workers, we have our stylists kind of workforce. How many should we have them? How, how many should we have on staff, you know, and, and when? Um, so they're basically producing a forecast that someone is saying, okay, uh, I'm uh, with this, I'm going to, you know, say we need to hire more people or have more people um, working these particular days, et cetera. And, and this is one of the oldest teams at Citrix. So their code base has been around uh, for a while. So Citrix has been like 10 years. So this was, you know, I think by the time when I looked at it, this code base was at least five, six years old. Uh, and what was actually happening was uh, uh, the um, uh, the pipeline that the Fed team kind of um, uh, goes through to kind of help the business make forecasts is the following. So they get actual, so meaning you know the number of signups, what was the marketing spend, I don't know uh, how much we have in inventory, etc. They get that data in. They kind of create a, this kind of featureized data frame. So this is where it's kind of creating feature vectors. They fit a bunch of time series models on it. Uh, and then um, uh, the, uh, the which predict the future, and then with that they produce a data frame which has forecast that the business makes decisions on. What was happening was uh, that this team was kind of on fire, uh, or at least under the gun, and because their their pipelines, their models, their things were kind of you know breaking down. Basically, they were you know um, uh, the business was like give me give me data, I need to be able to make a decision, but they were kind of struggling because all the pipelines and things were kind of uh, a, a large pain point for them. Uh, in this pipeline, the biggest problem it turned out for them it turned out for them to be uh, in creating this featureized data frame, and this is the focus of the talk. Um, uh, and so, why was this kind of creating this featureized data frame causing uh, you know fires or outages for them? Well, here's a kind of like a, a very kind of uh, a basic example. So this data frame is actually you know pretty wide. It's got thousands of on the order of thousands of columns wide. Um, it contains things like you know year, week, signups, etc. Uh, but it's not very not very kind of the amount of rows is kind of in order of thousands because that's just like you know um, uh, the, uh, they're trying to predict things based on week and obviously the business being uh, ten years old you know there isn't actually that many rows um, and so everything fixed in memory um, and what essentially what happens when they're creating new new columns or new inputs into models is that they're basically taking uh, some columns. Uh, and then running, creating a function that uses those columns to create another column. So in this example here, I know to create a, a one hot encoding of whether this week had a holiday or not, they're basically going you know, to say take in year and week to kind of compute that. And then what happens is they then start to, these columns start to build off of each other. So you start to get this kind of chaining effect going where one, uh, you create one column that turns, out, become, turns around and becomes input uh, to compute another column, et cetera. And this is really where the complexity and issues were occurring for them. Um, and so what does this look like in code? Uh, so here I have some some pandas code to kind of try to illustrate this a little, but uh, essentially um, it's pretty basic from top to bottom, the rough sketches, load some data, uh, do some kind of maybe inline manipulations, maybe pass this data frame to a function. Uh, but at, at the end, you have this data frame that has all the columns uh, that you want at the end. Now, this code looks pretty innocuous, but I want to tell you that if you scale this code to thousands of columns and say a growing team over a bunch of years, that this can actually get uh, pretty nasty. Um, why is that the case? Well, um, uh, there's essentially a lot of 
uh, with many different authors coming in, and many different styles of ways that you could write a, a function or ways to kind of create a column. There's a lot of heterogeneity in, in the way things have been defined. Um, inline data frame manipulations are cute and very succinct, but you know they're, they're not good for unit tests or documentation. And then uh, what the overarching theme is that uh, if you need the script or this code that uh, you're used using to kind of create this data frame, actually ordering is super important. So if you swap two lines, you could kind of break something without knowing it. And uh, from a software engineering standpoint, uh, what this really led to was, you know, unit testing was very poor, documentation was hard. Uh, and then as the code base grew, onboarding and documentation basically uh, became harder and harder. So uh, the, the best person to be able to de debug something was the person who had been on the team the longest. Backstory is, uh, in short, is code for the featureization was causing them, you know, headaches. Uh, and the other thing to remember is that uh, for this particular context, all data uh, fits in memory where we can find a machine that where all the data can fit in. So um, on to Hamilton. So what is Hamilton? Uh, at a high level, um, it, you basically write code uh, or write these special functions. Uh, it gets translated to a DAG or a directed acyclic graph. That's this kind of middle section here. Um, that is kind of code that my team owns. And then uh, the data scientist at the end gets a data frame and they kind of continue on their merry way. Uh, in short, the, the, the paradigm is, uh, they, they write functions, so very specifically. So I have a, a, an example here with the, um, uh, uh, the oh, of course, so my laser pointer works. Um, you, you have a pandas. Uh, say we want to create column C from something column A and column B. We basically instead write a function where the name of the output column is the name of the function, and the two input columns become input parameters. And then we see here, oh, look, we're summing A and B. Um, Pretty simple. We can then, you know, with Python, you know, three six and above, we can get type hints, and so we can actually, you know, can, when we create this deck, we can actually do some rudimentary type checking to ensure that things things um, uh, match. And then documentation is super easy and natural. It's uh, since we're using function documentation for that. Uh, in terms of like, how do we go from this function to a DAG? Well, it's pretty easy. So Python has, you know, great kind of, uh, I guess the inspect module is, is pretty awesome for inspecting things. So I invite you to take a look and learn how to use it because, you know, meta -prog programming is another, uh, uh, is a lot of fun. Um, and then it's, um, you know, computer science 101 where we're kind of creating uh, nodes and edges and using graph, essentially graph theory 101 um, to kind of connect everything and then walk the, uh, the DAG to kind of create a data frame. In terms of if you're wondering why it's called Hamilton, um, uh, so naming being one of the hardest things in computer science, uh, the kind of the Fed team or the, the forecasting estimation demand team is called the Fed for short. So when we're coming up, when I was coming up with this project, um, I was kind of thinking about uh, what associations are there with the Fed. Well, a Alexander Hamilton, for those who don't know, was the father of the Fed. Uh, he's also the, uh, I guess, the, the topic of the musical. Um, and then uh, the Fed team actually models business mechanics. And then we're also doing some basic graph theory. So uh, there are kind of Hamiltonian kind of concepts in both of those kind of fields. And so hence the name of Hamilton. Now onto um, some example code. So uh, just to give you a bit more of a sense of like what, what, what are these functions people are writing. So here I have a, a module, say myfunctions.py, where I've defined a bunch of uh, functions in, in this kind of Hamilton-esque way. Uh, just to reinforce the point, the function names will be output columns. So when we say, hey, create a data frame, we'll get columns with uh, that correspond to running these functions. And the inputs um, uh, in the, uh, 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 input columns. Now, um, you now need some driver code to actually kind of organize and orchestrate things. So uh, from uh, the first step is to kind of create some initial data. So this is where you might go to a database, load some data, uh, create a, basically a dictionary of you know um, uh, input to to, to values. Uh, we then kind of telling Python here, hey, my uh, input my functions module. Um, this is where my Hamilton functions are defined. Uh, we then pass them to this kind of driver object, which initializes everything. We specify what output columns we want, and then we can kind of uh, tell Hamilton to hey, execute things. Uh, and uh, this data frame will go back, will, will contain only the output columns. And uh, we can also optionally kind of, you know, add some nice tools to, for instance, to visualize things as we can, as, uh, as I'm showing here. Um, in terms of the result, um, so this has been running production, I guess, closer now to like two years, actually. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty successful. Um, with this kind of simple paradigm, uh, unit testing is super easy. Like, 
data science code historically or notoriously is known for not being testable. In this, in this way, like we essentially force everything to be unit testable. And when we we're migrating, we actually found a bunch of bugs that they wouldn't have caught otherwise. Documentation is super easy and natural because we're just using the function docs. So then you can expose things, uh, say with Sphinx docs really easily. Visualization comes easy because we can build a DAG and therefore onboarding and debugging are much simpler because you know what the uh, there, you don't have to go through spaghetti code to kind of understand the the order or lineage or where things come from. The way that Hamilton works is, is you know it's just really easy to find the function, know what its inputs, maybe track like one or two steps back in the DAG because you have that ability, uh, and it's very easy uh, then to kind of um, you know, figure out what's going on. Uh, you, you might notice that this you know this function uh, what what took one line of code now is like say represented in three so we do have some uh, decorators and things on, on functions to help um, and syntactic sugar to keep things dry um, and then the end result is that uh, the team who uses uh, stitch fix basically get to focus on what matters for them which is creating these functions and getting operational forecasts for the business and then they don't need to worry about how this is all stitched together since you know my team uh, ends up uh, owns this library and makes sure that you know th things things are glued together correctly uh, I, have a, I have a nice quote from a data scientist who onboarded onto that team and was kind of uh, talking about uh, their experience uh, onboarding to other data science teams. I'll save you kind of reading that here, but the, the too long uh, didn't read version is uh, the previous company or the previous time they've onboarded, understanding code bases was hard and it was not very, very obvious where things were used and thus when they were making changes, it was very easy to break things. With Hamilton, it was very easy uh, for that uh, data scientist to come in with no prior domain knowledge and uh, ramp up pretty easily because the dependencies for, for things are very clearly specified. Functions are, are kind of simple and concise, and therefore it's kind of hard to break things. And so they have more confidence in making changes. Um, and so I want to say getting started with Hamilton, if you're curious, it'll just pique your interest. I'm kind of, um, if you're listening to Tyler's talk, maybe you have some, you know, uh, uh, data pipeline issues that maybe could, Hamilton could help, uh, help you kind of organize or wrangle. Uh, it's pretty easy. You should be able to get started in 15 minutes. So pip install SF Hamilton. Uh, I see the README, uh, we do have kind of examples. Um, uh, if you like us, if, if you like the project, start on GitHub. Also feel free to create issues. If you find something that's not working for you, love to hear some feedback. And then I also started, uh, we've also started a Discord channel. So if you want some someone to chat to live, you can kind of try us there. That's a bit of an experiment. Um, in terms of future, uh, so, um, Ham I mean, so Hamilton really is, you know, uh, as, I, as I said before, like the, the way the problem started out is all, all the data fit in memory. So we didn't have to deal with any distributed processing or anything. We didn't have to deal with Spark. But really, um, there isn't any reason why, uh, since we have this DAG, like, hey, maybe we can actually, like, compile it onto Spark or compile it to Dask or uh, maybe onto Apache Beam or something like that. Um, so uh, definitely thinking of, like, how can we take uh, think this that runs on a single machine onto make it run with several? Um, we're also uh, the focus, or the, the, there's a bit of an assumption right now that you know, Hamilton only works with pandas. That assumption doesn't need to be there. There isn't any reason why we couldn't support other data structures. So we could even go pure NumPy uh, if we wanted to, or essentially any object that could be union or merged together could actually be a fit for what Hamilton could help kind of create an output. And then um, for those, for uh, uh, this Hamilton kind of grew up really making it making easy for to create, you could say, manage, you know, wide data frames. So this is very much um, uh, a time series modeling s kind of, or at least uh, a problem that's uh, more apparent in time series modeling. But uh, there isn't any reason why Hamilton couldn't, uh, you know, grow to cover more general uh, generalized featureization. So how do you, in general, create features for input into a model? And so we're also take, uh, thinking about ideas on how we can take this more mainstream. If any of this is interesting to you, feel free to come chat with me afterwards, or um, uh, uh, I'll put um, this talk in the, um, the the Slack channel for, for this group, so you, you'll be able to find the links. Um, but otherwise, um, that's all I had. I think I finished this talk early. So thank you for listening. And I will look at the Q&A tab.